Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Hafiz and this in this video we'll uh, discuss and compare the attributes of these buildings and those are the uh, Sultan Abdul Samad and as well as the uh, Royal Selangor Club building. Um, so let's go through the a brief uh, a brief historical background of these buildings and as well as the culture of user as in how they are being used. So, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Safis and in this video we'll discuss the comparison uh, of the attributes of these buildings. Uh, so, there are the Sultan Abdul Samad and as well as the Royal Selangor Club. So, uh, first we look on to the a bit of brief historical background of these buildings. I'll be explaining a bit on the uh, Royal Selangor Club and as well as the culture of the user. Also, we'll explain a bit on the scale. So, uh, the Royal Selangor Club was founded in 1884 by the British. It was made back then by uh, S for Social Club. Uh, the British uh, use this place to gather the higher-ups or the people with high social status within the British colony uh, community uh, to meet in, in this place. Um, now they use this place to have sports events and as well as social public events. Um, next, a bit more on the history, the building was flowed flooded in 1911, 1917, December 1925, and 1926. On 1970, the main area of the club was raised by fire, so the building is basically was basically destroyed. Um, they Initially, they planned to relocate the building, but now they just uh, rebuilt the whole structure all over again. A bit of culture of the user within the place. Uh, they use this place a lot to do a um, bunch of sport events. So we'll look onto it. They have a field for hockey, uh, a big swimming pool for swimming activity. They have squash, uh, a bit of cricket, a bit of billiards, and they also have the gym center. And they have this huge field for football. Uh, competitions. Uh, other than sports, they also do live bands and weddings and bunch of uh, public events and they have a lot of places to relax in. So there's, there's this lounge, the hall, the uh, what do you call this, the bar, the cafes and a lot of restaurants. And as for the skill, if you look onto the exterior, the Royal Slum Club is a three-story building with a very high roofing. It's very steep. Uh, the longest side of the building, if you see here, consists of, I mean here, consists of three valleys. While at the both ends are gable roofs uh, with high heights compared to these three roofings. Uh, in the inter interior, the building defines the Tudor-Britain architecture. It was originated by Britain's colony, so it uses a very steep roofing. Uh, most spaces in the interior were built in normal building shielding height, about four meters, three meters, around that. Some are five meters. But in some spaces, they use very high shielding. Uh, especially for places that they help big events uh, just to create that very grand atmosphere that contrasts over the rest of the spaces. So the user would feel a bit less cramped. So that's for the Royal Slangon Club. Now we'll look on to the Sultan of Sanam by Afzal. So for the Sultan of Islamic building, so basically it was uh, built in about 100 years ago. So basically it was used uh, to as a government offices. So it's a government for the Federated Malay States and also 
uh, Selangor State Government. And in 1971, it was hit by the major flood. And after that, uh, the Selangor Government State relocates to Shah Alam. And after after that, uh, it was renovated in 1978. And the court has taken over the, the buildings as for the Supreme Court, the Appeal Court and the Malay, Malaya High Court. And after that, they relocated again. Uh, the court relocated to Putrajaya and the main of it became the main office for the Minister of Information, Communication and Culture. And, and it was renovated before the takeover uh, for the main office for the Minister of Information, Communication and Culture. And also it was, it act as the backdrop of various events and importantly the events, the National Day Parade where the people march in front of the buildings. And after that, how the scale effect the Sultan Abdul Samad building design, which is they have tall minarets that replicates uh, the tall minarets and big onion, the onion dome that replicates and symbolize how the multiracial, multicultural race in Malaysia, which is the influence of Egyptian, Gothic and Indian style architecture. And also how the these minarets and the domes were very, very big and it became the hierarchy of the buildings that attracts. Uh, and it indicates uh, its entrance and also how the massive 135 feet high clock tower that it replicates the Big Bang Tower in London because the architect was from London which is uh, EC Spooner so it this very very tall high clock tower bring back the memories for the people in Malaysia or for the nations which mark uh, the Independence Day that will strike the clock at the midnight. So, that's all. So, after that, we can continue to Arivasfa to represent about uh, the Royal Slango Club for the texture and color. Okay. So, um, for the color and the color and texture for Royal Slango Club. So first, I'll start with the color from the exterior. exterior. Okay, so um, uh, first, uh, overall, the building um, from the exterior, the building is uh, covered with white painted uh, on the wall. And um, uh, some of the, the part of the wall uh, has uh, a dark brown exposed table framework. And on the the frame glass uh, on the window part of it it has a uh, with black and then, frame uh, and then uh, for the roof it is uh, an orange terracotta roof for interior, and for the interior um, um, the wall uh, uh, still mainly white and some in area, some area uh, the, wall are uh, the wall are covered with uh, brown timber panel and some in some also uh, in some, some spaces space uh, uh, it, is it is covered with a black timber panel, panel. and uh, so in the conclusion um, the main color used in the design are basically um, natural color uh, because uh, it is uh, because the building is uh, in Tudor architecture style which is inclined to uh, that color and this is to give a unique feel uh, in the city and also a rustic feeling yet majestic Okay, now I, I move on into texture, um, which is a start from the exterior. So, as I said before, the oh no, uh, the wall uh, uh, it has a half timber look, which is uh, if you see on the wall, there's uh, like a cross, uh, a cross, um, uh, cross uh, shape on the wall, uh, which is the half timber look, uh, uh, which is not just on the exterior, but also in the interior. Uh, next, uh, the wall is a concrete wall with exposed timber frame. And then um, uh, the, the roof is uh, U-shaped terracotta tiles, uh, pitch roof. Okay, uh, moving on to the interior, um, mainly the the walls are white painted concrete walls and in some special spaces like in here, ballroom, reading room, residence room, uh, they are covered with timber panels 
in uh, in one of the room which which is president's room they have a uh, ornament ornamented timber panel with a uh, locomotive in that spaces space I mean. so next is uh, okay in the cellar room okay this place is uh, most like the place where they let out of their them their self for the user and so they use a uh, floor to ceiling mirror in these spaces because uh, the space also use a uh, black black panel so to counter that they use a uh, floor to ceiling mirror and then next is in the games room where this room is uh, only have uh, games so this room is uh, c covered with uh, wallpaper red wall red wallpaper with signature spade like motif and for the kitchen uh, uh, from walls to the floor it was it all uh, covered with Please start. With that, uh, I passing to Arif. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To compare uh, the bangunan Royal Selangor Club with bangunan Sultan Abdul Samad, I will continue with the color and texture. So for the color of bangunan Sultan Abdul Samad, uh, it has a new Mughal architecture which is uh, the distinctive Indo-Islamic architecture style that developed in northern uh, northern west uh, uh, symmetrical and decorative amalgam of Persian, Turkish and Indian architecture. This is the uh, new Mughal architecture style and then I continue with the arch uh, the Bangunan Sita Ul Samad has have white arch all over the building adapting the Moorish architecture style. This is the shape of the arch and this is also the arch, white color arch. And then we have uh, blood and bandage style, whereas you can see the bangunan style sama has the red brick and also white arch stripped to each other. It, call, it is called blood and bandage style. The patterns of strip bare red brick and white, white plaster rendering or tiling that was popular in the late Victorian and Edwardian eras. And then the design of Bangunan Sita Samad has the same design with public buildings in the British era in India. This is the building that exists in uh, India. They call it a little garden. And proceed to the texture of Bangunan Sita Samad. Uh, Bangunan Sita Abdul Samad have Moorish features that they imply that they adapt on the type, on the design of the arch. Moorish features is an architecture style which historically developed in the Western Islamic world. And then uh, Bangunan Sita Abdul Samad has walls from red bricks and also various shape and size of arch. So this is the uh, right side of Bangunan Sita Abdul Samad. As you can see, we use uh, red bricks and also we have and also they have different shape of arch such as the downstairs arch and also on the upstairs. It has a different shape to allow the ventilation. And then uh, steel, iron and timber were used as the material. So this is the engine that uh, exists inside the uh, clock tower of Bangunan Sita Samad. Okay, we don't have the picture. But this is the engine that generates the clock. It, it, it is made from steel and the housing is made from timber. Uh, and then we have copper clad onion domes to show the indoor Saracenic architecture style. This is the uh, copper clad onion domes on Bangunan Sita Samad. And this is the the uh, example of indoor Saracenic architecture style. So proceed to so now uh, we proceed to the to Mang eh to Lok Mang uh, to proceed with the language and special special impression. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
my name is Lukman and I'm going to present on language and the special question of the Royal Selangor Club uh, building. So the first one is language. Uh, the Royal Selangor Club uses uh, the latest style of the 21st century Tudor style, which is also known as Tudor Baton. Uh, it maintains the mock Tudor style, but uh, most of it uh, uh, combined with the local um, uh, style that influenced by the multiculture of races in Malaysia. Uh, so it uh, includes the half timbering and filled with herringbone brickwork, uh, jetted floor supported by consoles, hip rafters act as the main roof structure, external beams to differentiate each floor, dormer and mal malin windows to bring sunlight, ventilation through roof parts and very decorative. So the next one is special impression. So it is divided into three levels because this building has three levels of um, floor. Uh, so the first one is the ground floor. The ground floor, the first uh, space is going to be the veranda coffee house. The activities are uh, sharing of business ideas and verbal dis discussion other than um, have some coffee break. Uh, so it is located behind the grand staircase. Uh, it faces the Padang Merdeka and is designed to allow user to uh, have a directed view to the outdoor activities. Um, so the style of the veranda coffee, coffee house is modern Tudor and it uh, it said to be um, giving the experience of home-like atmosphere with the column with timber cladding accentuate the modern to the ambience. Uh, so the layout is the furniture aligned um, at the east. It is designed to block the view from the west and give a highlighted on the east uh, to the Padang Merdeka. So uh, it also receives a lot of natural morning sunlight. The next one is the reading room. The activity done in this uh, space is um, reading and also some private discussion. Um, it is a small and hidden space but has natural light coming in. As you can see, this is and it has a very big window. And it the space is placed at a corner of the ground floor. Um, this space requires a silence and its position restricts people from passing through uh, oftenly. So it it um, follows what the room uh, needs. So the style is Tudor Baton. Uh, it is full, fully furnished and decorated with Tudor Baton um, uh, furniture and also like finishing. So yeah, it acts as a rest area. Uh, the next one is the cellar room. Cellar room is basically uh, like a place for people to get some alcohol and wine. Uh, the activity is alcohol socialization and wine storage. The space is dark and light of natural lighting because the space is um, used to store wine and it is located in an isolated corridor which hindered direct viewing from the reception area. So you cannot see the cellar room directly from the reception, reception area. So the style is quite different from the overall style of the reception Royal Selangor Club, which is, uh, they use the modern style. Uh, it is designed for the drinking event, like um, most of the club or wine uh, place uh, is designed in this kind of style, which has minimal ornamentation and finishes, uh, but it uses the mirror to enhance the space. So the next one is the game room. The game room is uh, basically a place where people uh, go gambling. It is located next to the cellar room. Uh, it is also partly hidden from the no normal view, like the cellar room. Uh, the style uh, is quite the same with the um, uh, cellar room, which is modern style. Uh, the, the finishing and the furnishing is quite similar to the cellar room. But the color scheme of the uh, game room is um, what differs from the cellar room. 
there's game game room uses like a bright color but the cellar room uh, uses like a dark uh, color scheme the the next floor is going to be the first floor which locate the kitchen which is the second largest um, space in the first floor the activities uh, done there are basically preparing food washing baking and food sorry uh, it creates a high humidity due to the immense heat from the cooking activities but uh, the the humidity is well ventilated and is quite modern because it is designed for functionality rather than uh, just simple uh, decoration uh, and there are a lot of safety feature installed as you can see in the uh, the picture it has like this um, fire safety features and the next one is the main savory savory which is uh, basically a place where people from the kitchen serve the food uh, so people from the kitchen will going to place the order uh, at the main savory and the people from the ballroom will um, take the uh, food from the uh, main savory and go serve at the ballroom uh, this is the ballroom uh, it is the grandest um, and the largest space in the first floor uh, it incorporates uh, the double volume to uh, enhance that grand feeling the activities done here are public relation events and also some company exhibition uh, the style is uh, to the better uh, it has exposed trust also to attract guests and enhance the um, grand um, experience the layout is um, the layout of the space is it shares the same reception as the president's uh, room and occupies some extended jetties to widen the interior so this is the president room president room is basically a private uh, small private place where people uh, go, uh, where people are um, have their meetings here and also some little small private function used for small yeah uh, the style is studio and a uh, local um, style. The interior is a mixture of both, where the studio features are the timber panels with simple ornaments, and the local features are the floral motif, uh, like uh, uh, complementing both. So the layout is, um, like I just said, it shares the same reception as the ballroom. Uh, and the president room is the first space is uh, the space the first space people are going to see upon um, going up the staircase. Uh, so the next one is the second floor, which is which only has office, and it is located at the trusses of roof. So it is quite enclosed, and it has minimal natural lighting and ventilation. So the activity is administration work and also some meeting. And then the light source and the ventilation source are both from LED and air conditioner. Uh, next, the last one is the special organization, which the Royal Selangor Club building uses great organization. Uh, so thank you. Uh, next is Zed Shafiq. Assalamualaikum. My name is Zed. So now I have present about special impression and language for Sultan Samad Bidi. Okay, basically I have uh, generalized and take out some important things. So basically uh, the building has two stories, uh, which is uh, the rough plan, the floor plan roughly is the shape of letter F, which is uh, the letter F, the extended um, top bar representing the frontage which, which creates sense of welcoming which uh, the top bar creates like an entrance where people can see and it creates a sense of uh, which uh, doors or which entrance they want, must to enter. And the buildings uh, use a symmetrical impression, which when we view in the plan, it is in F-shaped nature of the building. But if we view from the elevation, the buildings basically have like the over here, the central clock tower, which acts as the axis of the building. Uh, the left and right is the small tower with the spiral staircase. 
and the buildings there are wide verandas on both floors 3.5 meter around the building this can is access uh, for the building and provides comfort because um, we can see different forms of arches such as keyhole OG pointer and horseshoe arches this all of things is uh, create to like passive design like provide cross ventilation which to adapt to the hot and humid climate of uh, Kuala Lumpur. The building basically has three towers, such as the tallest central clock tower and the two shorter circulation tower. The stairway, the rhythm in its design is shown in a mesmerizing way as repeating arches coincide in a melodic fashion. As we can see, uh, this spiral staircase over here uh it, the on top of the spiral staircase uh there is actually an uh like a tower and a dome and with the open space planning so time to sum up building use the same element of more than one in the space it is the use of repetition of shape color horizontal vertical planning and others such as this texture and pattern over here the use of red brick rectangular shape all around the building this can create um, something like can unify different parts uh, of the building into a whole harmony design. This uh, design gives the impression of rhythm and repetition to create a theme to its design, which is basically a unique theme. Okay, to so, uh, conclude our debate or not debate, like presentation to uh, differentiate between how Sultan Dusan building and Roy have pros and cons because each of these two buildings here we have it was it was designed uh, to serve their own purpose because for Sultan Dusan buildings so basically how their design was with the minarets and also onion domes so basically it want to replicate the culture of multiracial multiracies in Malaysia and others and also how the architecture for the uh, Royal Selangor Club, which is the British uh, steep roof. So basically, it was designed for to replicate the the grand and the club for the visitors to use. And also, how it replicates the British culture on how how the architecture was. So it replicates how the activities was. Uh, ongoing in British and Malaysia and others. So that's all.